Hello, and welcome back to my channel, Mint with Mare. Okay, you all, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it today. I'm going to analyze, react, not really reacting, because I have heard this song a million times. My Tears Ricochet. It's my favorite Taylor Swift song ever. It is near and dear to my heart for a lot of reasons that some of you might might pick up on, possibly, possibly. I have heard a lot of thoughts on this song. I have read through Reddit boards. I have read other people's analysis of this song, and there's a lot of different ways that people interpret this. So I'm quickly gonna go over some of the ones that I have heard, and then I'm gonna do it from the lens of my own eyes, through my own experience and what I think Taylor was trying to get across with this. So there are some people, as you hear the song, that look at this as someone who has passed away. They are haunting somebody that did them wrong. A lot of people are like, oh, it's a person who's died. And, and I actually did not see it that way, but I can see why you would view it that way. And I'm not saying that it's right or wrong, but I'm just saying that like, that's, I see that. Also feel as if this song is so good for people that have had to deal with family family or friends or situations where they are coming out and they have not found support. A lot of people from the LGBTQ community have felt as if they relate to this song and loving their family members or friends that prove to them that their love was actually conditional, just heartbreaking. I've also listened to what Taylor has had to say about the song and she has emphasized that she watched a lot of movies around the time of writing this about divorce. She watched A Marriage Story and it's because when she left her old label, when I think his name is Scott Borchetta, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, I don't know, Scott, something. They were so close. I mean, he signed her when she was super young and they had known each other for so long. But when you know someone that well, you also know what could hurt each other the absolute worst. So the end of their business relationship was like a divorce. It wasn't amicable. I'm going to take it from that lens, not just about Taylor and Scott from the business relationship ending. I'm thinking about it more of a divorce because a do divorce really is, I can only imagine like going and signing the papers would be like a death, truly a death of that union, what was made. And the same for whenever she left her old label, it had to have been like a death. That relationship, that bond is, is no longer there. It was severed in a very negative way because she wasn't given rights to her songs and that he ended up selling her her music to Scooter Braun, he knows that that would hurt her. Okay, let's just go ahead and get into the song. I feel like I'm talking too much beforehand, but whatever. We get the here, we line up, we've been in a sunlit room. And if I'm on fire, you'll be made of ashes too. We gather here to witness the union of these two people. This is typically how the beginning of a wedding ceremony starts. That's why I think of this being a divorce and this is at the end. So we gather here, we line up weeping in a sunlit room. It makes me think of a church or a mosque or a synagogue that has stained glass windows or windows where the sun is shining down in. And it's when you're at a wake and you're observing the end of someone's life. And she says, if I'm on fire, you'll be made of ashes too. So this is basically stating cause and effect. You know, I've always been weary of having a business partner because I've witnessed my own father and his struggles with his business partner who kept a lot of things from him and did some things that were, to put it nicely, like very, very shady and sketchy. Even though my dad didn't have anything really to do with it, my father feels as if it negatively impacted my dad because it's like, well, if he's on fire, if he's ashes, my dad's gonna be ashes too because they are business partners and that's how it goes. And it's also the same with marriage. If you burn yourself to the ground, like I'm ultimately gonna be burned too. I'm gonna become ashes too. I caution a lot of people with business relationships, marriage, things that you sign a contract and you are tied to another person because, and this is my own stuff, I'll be honest about this. This is my stuff <laughs> um, because other people can have wonderful marriages and working relationships and things like that. That has not been my experience. And so I like to work for myself. And I think that being tied to someone else, sometimes you have no control over somebody's choices. And unfortunately, you can be collateral damage to their choices. And it's out of your control. You may not ask for any of it, but yet you both are going to be ashes because of it. It's brutal. You'll be made of ashes too. 
Even on my worst day, did I deserve, babe, all the hell you gave me? Cause I loved you, I swear I loved you, till my dying day. Yeah, I feel that. She's saying, like, even on my absolute worst day, where we all have our shadow self, parts of us that are really ugly and dark, even on the worst that I could ever be. Did I deserve the hell that you gave me? Did I deserve that? I vowed to love you. I vowed to be there for you till my dying day. And that's also what makes me think of a divorce and that the marriage is ending because she says that I swore I would love you to my dying day. I didn't have it in myself to go with grace and you're the hero flying around saving face so i didn't have it in me to go with grace that means you know the way it all went down i i wasn't able to have the best composure i think she's admitting that she maybe didn't act in a way that she's exactly proud of she didn't have it in her it was so brutal what was going down that she wasn't able to act with grace that she typically maybe would have. It might have been because the person that she loved and cared for was trying to act like the hero or present it in a way that it wasn't and trying to save face for their own benefit. And she couldn't take that because it wasn't right. And if I'm dead to you, why are you at the wake? Cursing my name, wishing I stayed. So she's saying, if I'm dead to you, then why are you here? Why are you at the wake? If I'm dead to you, then like, why are you even here? Why are you even observing me? Why are you even standing here in remembrance of my life when you destroyed it? That's how I take it. And when she says, you know, look at how my tears ricochet. It's like the pain you caused me is gonna cause you pain. And I love the word ricochet. You know, ricochet is, it means like a glancing rebound after a major impact has happened. And so it's like something major happened and it's causing her tears to pour out, but instead of them just being her tears, it's like they ricochet, they, they hit, they rebound off of the impact, which will then go back at the person that caused them. It's just like when a bullet ricochets and it can hurt someone, that's what is happening. We we gather stones, never knowing what they'll mean. Some to throw, some to make a diamond ring. This is why I also think that it is about marriage because she's talking about a diamond ring. A diamond is a stone. Never know how they're gonna actually be used and what they were intended for. So a diamond ring is a stone and you think that it's going to be used as a symbol of love and especially commitment. And unfortunately, sometimes that ring, that stone can be used against you. That symbol of love can actually, it's going to be used to hurt you. You know I didn't want to have to haunt you, but what a ghostly scene. So she's saying she didn't want this. She's like, I didn't want to have to haunt you. I didn't want to have to come and, and visit you, but this is ghostly. This scene, this destruction, what has happened is so truly, she's seeing it as a nightmare. Like this is truly a nightmare. It's a ghostly scene because this is such a nightmare. I'm gonna have to haunt you. You wear the same jewels that I gave you as you bury me makes me think of um, somebody, a wedding ring that you, that you gave the person, jewels that you gave the person, symbols of jewelry, love, and it's showing how much this person used you and took advantage of you, that they're wearing those same jewels. They have the, the ability, the audacity to wear those jewels as they dig into the ground and bury you, that they're able to even do that to you. It's like a straight up knife in the heart. <laughs> I didn't have it in myself to go with grace Cause when I'd fight you used to tell me I was brave So she's saying that she didn't have it in herself to go with grace and she's saying when I used to fight for what I believed in when I used to speak up and fight for something like you used to tell me I was brave you used to be my cheerleader like you used to support me 
in that way and believed in me. I think it's that idea that you never thought that that would be the person, you know, when you're going through divorce, like that you vowed your life to. You never thought that they were gonna have to be the person that you would have to fight against. And if I'm dead to you, why are you at the wake? Cursing my name, wishing I stayed. Look at how my tears will shed. It's like, here you are cursing my name, upset that she left. It's just, it doesn't make any sense, I think. That it's like, here you are, you're at the wake, cursing my name, wishing that I stayed. It's like, look how my tears ricochet. Did you not know that by hurting me, you would be hurting yourself? Gosh, it also makes me think of that really good Beyonce song, Don't Hurt Yourself. Oh. I love that song so much. She's also talking about like, who did you think I was? You didn't marry some average woman here. And she's saying like, when you hurt me, you hurt yourself. And that's what I think about with my tears ricochet. And I can go anywhere I want, anywhere I want, just not home. You know how that feels. It's like, if you get a divorce, you're free. Or if you break up with somebody, you're free from the relationship. Or she's free from the contract, being bound to this person in business. And she's like, I can go anywhere. I can go anywhere I want, but I can't go home. I can't go back to the place that we both shared together. I can't face the place that I really want to go. The place I really want to be that I called home with you. Just saying, I, I can do anything now, but it's it's not what I wanted. And you can name for my heart go for blood. So you can aim for my heart. You can do all of the cruelest things, the most despicable things. It hit me where it really, where you know it would absolutely devastate me. So they're going for blood. She's saying, you, you can do that. Like with him selling all of her stuff to Scooter Broad. She's saying, but you're, like, you're still gonna miss me in your bones. You're still going to miss me. I know it. And I still talk to you. when she says, I still talk to you when I'm screaming at the sky, it just makes me envision like, why? Like, why did you have to do this? What was the point of this? Did I miss the signs? Like even looking up at the sky and the stars, like did I read all of the stars wrong? Did I read all of this wrong? When you can't, because her tears ricochet, when you can't sleep at night, you hear my stolen lullabies, talking about her stolen music from her. And I think that when you're in a divorce, it's like, even if, you, especially when you have children and you can't sing those lullabies together, to your child before you you put them to bed because you can't do that anymore they're like stolen from you like they're taken from you that experience of of wanting to to do it together that's what comes to mind for me the person didn't keep their end of the bargain or the promises that they had made i didn't have it in myself to go with grace and so the battleships will sink beneath the waves to kill me, but it killed you just the same. Cursing my name, wishing I stay. It turned into your worst fears. That that one hits so deep. It's like like you killed me. But it killed you just the same. And you might wish that I stayed, and you're gonna curse my name, thinking that I I have a part in this. But you know what? I know this isn't who you intended to be and you turned into your worst fears. And I remember when Scott Bruschetta, I think he always used to wear these shirts or he sold it that says like, like art has value or music has value, something like that. He like stood up for, you know, that music, you shouldn't be able to stream music for free and that it's art and that has value and that costs money. But what's ironic is that he ends up doing something that isn't valuing the art by selling it to somebody that the artist wouldn't want it being sold to and so he did turn into his worst fears you know who he actually didn't want to be he ended up becoming because of greed or anger or resentment and at the end of a marriage it's like sometimes both people turn into their worst fears based on the situation the worst parts of themselves can come out It's 
like they're just being so careless. Like you're tossing out the blame. You are drunk on this pain. You are just, you're indulging in this pain and you're tossing out that blame. And that is just these behaviors, this action of being drunk on the pain. They're crossing out all of the good years. It's like everything that you're doing is taking away all the good that once was, or it's tainting it. feel emotionally exhausted right now. It's so heavy in so many ways. I'm really looking forward to seeing how you all interpreted the song and I don't know, I can't say anymore. I've said enough. She's just a genius and that just captures everything and just, she's just, it's just so amazing. So be kind, be safe, send in love to you all. Some of you have asked me how to send payments to me and I was thinking a lot about it. I never started this YouTube channel to make money. That wasn't the goal. The goal was to create a following. I really, really want to publish two of my books so badly. It's a dream of mine. It dawned on me that maybe I shouldn't keep trying to go through publishing companies and I should just publish myself, self-publish. So if you all do send me any type of payments, I promise you it'll go towards self-publishing because I've been rejected by, let's get out the list. So Harbinger rejected me, Chronicle I never heard back from and I still love you Chronicle books. I just, they're the best. I have so many of their card decks too. Pessy Publishing, I came really close but wasn't able to seal the deal. Cider Mill Press, Quirk Books, uh, my husband. <laughs> just kidding, not really. <laughs> You gotta laugh, you gotta make jokes to handle the sadness. <laughs> I have decided that I'm gonna just take it into my own hands because why not? I think that self-publishing is something that a lot of us have to do if we're not given the opportunities to get in the room with somebody that we know or some type of connections, which I don't really have. So anyways, if you do wanna support me with it, I will happily put it toward finally making my dream come true. The book is called Hey Addiction, Thanks for Nothing. It's a brutally honest guide to loving an addict without losing your Mind, the loved ones of addicts that have become collateral damage in the midst of the addiction of their loved one. So it's for them and it has some of my artwork in it, some funny, funny, weird artwork. It's kind of like a self-help memoir. Mm -hmm.